As we're going through the Sumeru patches, we're getting more new characters to play around with, and at the same time, new potential team comps with unique playstyles and interactions. In many of the team comps we see nowadays though, there seems to be something missing, like a crucial component that we used to always have in a team that's not really here anymore. A specific character who is, well, was a must-have to make any strong team. If you couldn't tell from the title, in this video we're going to be talking about Bennett, and why he's not really used that commonly in most teams nowadays, and how he went from the strongest must-have support to now an almost niche pick for a select number of teams. To understand why Bennett fell off, first, we need to understand Bennett's role. He's designed to be a healer and an offensive support, and no, we don't talk about DPS Bennett. This is what makes Bennett a good healer, because as we all know, all the good healers in this game do more than just healing. That's why characters who offer very little outside of healing like Barbara and Chi Chi see very little use, while characters like Bennett, Kokomi, and Diona are very popular, especially in the Spiral Abyss. These popular healers are usually picked for the other utility they provide, mainly to increase the team's damage in some way, and the healing is just an added bonus. The reason why Bennett was so popular all this time is because he provided a very huge and direct damage boost for his team. 90% of Bennett's base attack added to a teammate is nothing to scoff at. Added a high base attack weapon and 4-piece noblesse and it adds up to a lot. I say he was popular because that's where he starts to get limited. His damage buff is not just any damage buff, but a flat attack buff which used to be pretty universal but nowadays, we're getting more and more DPS characters who don't really value attack as much. Or at all. Characters who have their damage partially or completely not scale off attack are not a new concept in Genshin. The first character we got who has the majority of their damage not scale off attack at all was Albedo, released back in 1.2, who deals most of his damage based on defense. Well, technically Noelle was the first, with her shield casting damage scaling off defense, but who uses Noelle for damage? Or at all. Albedo's transient blossoms purely use defense for damage, and due to the lack of defense buffing characters, he was regarded as pretty underwhelming. Nowadays though, he's not top tier, but he's a lot stronger now than he used to be, because of the addition of Goro who can serve as a niche damage buffer with his defense and geo damage buff. Attack isn't really important for Albedo, which means even without Cinnabar Spindle, you can use an R5 Harbinger of Dawn, a 3 star weapon on him because of the crit buff and since he mostly stays off the field anyway, it's very easy to maintain the passive. Ah, yes, how could we talk about non-attack scaling without talking about Hu Tao? Hu Tao is perhaps one of the most well-known characters for not scaling off attack. Well, she does, but in a way unique to herself. She has the lowest base attack in the game, making attack percent stats pretty bad on her. She gains attack by converting some of her HP into attack through her skill, and with the highest base HP stat in the game, she can gain a lot of attack by using her skill, which is then used for damage as her talents still scale off her attack stats. Now, does Bennett fit in here? Well, it depends. Bennett being here with Hu Tao can make Pyro Resonance, but as mentioned before, Hu Tao doesn't particularly appreciate attack percent buffs. What about Bennett's Burst? It provides a flat attack buff, so that should be fine, right? Well, Hu Tao already gains a lot of flat attack from her skill, so Bennett's buff won't matter to her as much as it does for most other characters. Plus, Hu Tao does better damage when her HP is below half, and Bennett's burst heals the active character within it, so that can mess with her damage. It all just depends on how strong Hu Tao and Bennett are individually, and it'll depend on whether or not Bennett's buff, C6 included, is strong enough to make up for the lost damage by healing Hu Tao. In most cases though, Hu Tao just deals better damage at low HP, and it's better to put her in a double Geo or double Hydro team, as Hydro Resonance gives her bonus HP. Arataki Ito is another character who has partial non-attack scaling. Similarly to Hu Tao, he converts another stat into attack, with his being defense, and he does it by casting his burst. And yes, he does have the highest base defense in the game. He gets a lot of attack by casting his burst, which is why Ushi deals so much damage when Ito has his burst active, especially when buffed by Goro, and the Geo damage buff is also a nice bonus. Even though Ito's damage scales off attack, it's still better to invest into defense, especially defense percent stats because of how high his base defense is, and he actually converts quite a lot of defense into attack when casting his burst. His 4th ascension passive and best in slot weapon also adds some defense scaling to his special charged attacks which make up a lot of his damage. So, does Bennett fit in here? I mean... He gives a nice attack buff, and his healing doesn't mess with Ito's damage unlike with Hu Tao's. Well, again, Ito gains a good amount of flat attack already, so Bennett's buff isn't really needed. Not that Bennett is bad on an Ito team, the attack buff is actually still pretty nice, but it's not very important. Plus, Ito needs his burst to deal any kind of significant damage, so Bennett's spot can instead be filled in with another Geo character to help battery Ito, allowing him to run lower ER and invest more into damage stats. 
The same concept applies to Noel. Moving on, we can talk about Hydro characters as a whole, specifically the recent ones. I'm sure you've noticed, but the recent Hydro characters we got all have their talent scale of HP. Well, except their normal attacks. I mean, their normal normal attacks, the physical damage attacks, making HP the stat you want to invest in for damage. Well, unless you're building them for physical damage, which I don't recommend by the way. The first Hydro damage dealer we got who has HP contribute to some of their damage is Ayato, but he still mainly scales off attack, with the HP scaling just being a nice little bonus. Well, actually, Kokomi was the first character we got who has her HP contribute to her damage, but let's be real here. Kokomi is not a damage dealer. Before Kokomi though, all the earlier Hydro characters had their damage scale purely off attack, so what happened? In the early days of Genshin, Hydro was designed to be the healing element, and was known to have characters with healing properties such as Barbara and Singcho, and later on, Kokomi. And many Hydro enemies have healing abilities too. Before patch 3.0, Hydro Resonance used to give the entire team 30% incoming healing bonus instead of the HP bonus that we have today. However, healing isn't that important in this game, and especially in Spiral Abyss, being able to deal a lot of damage fast is much more valued. So, the devs realize that dedicating a whole element to healing is fucking stupid. With many Hydro characters' healing abilities scaling off of HP, they decided to turn the healing abilities of HP into damage, which is why we got HP scaling damage sources for Kokomi, well, they tried, and Ayato. Just one patch after Ayato's release, we got Yelan, the first Hydro damage dealer who purely uses HP for all of her important damage sources. After Yelan, the later Hydro characters we got, Candice and Nilu, followed the same trend with all their important damage sources scaling off HP, with Nilu's HP also increasing the damage of the special bloom cores for her niche. All these changes made it so that the newer Hydro characters can invest into HP, making them deal damage and still have a lot of survivability at the same time, with Hydro Residents boosting both damage and survivability even further, which does make me curious about how the Hydro Archon scalings will work. It's just a shame that the older Hydro characters like Child and Mona don't get to enjoy this feature, but this makes it so that Bennett has almost zero synergy with the newer Hydro characters, and there's not much reason at all to slot him into Hydro teams. I want to talk about Electro and Dendro characters together because they're very commonly used together in teams nowadays, and they make use of the same family of elemental reactions. Quicken and its sub-reactions Aggravate and Spread, collectively known as Catalyze, are the reactions that trigger when Dendro and Electro are applied on the same target. I've already made a video explaining how Aggravate works, so click here to find out more about it. And yes, Spread works the same way but for the other elements, so the same principles apply. Basically, Aggravate and Spread are very strong reactions that allow Electro and Dendro characters to deal more damage. It works by adding a flat damage bonus that scales off character level and elemental mastery, and it best suits Electro and Dendro characters who apply their elements rapidly with lower damage hits, with faster applicators appreciating EM more than attack, or whatever offensive stats they scale off of. Judging by the Electro and Dendro characters we've been getting recently, as well as a lot of the older Electro characters, though in practice it can be influenced by many external factors, it is often better to run more EM on them rather than attack, making Bennett go down in value in Catalyze teams. Besides, the Quicken status behaves like a Dendro aura towards other elements, so Bennett's power can actually trigger burning and consume the Quicken aura and disrupt the sub-reactions, making him do more harm than good in these teams. Alright, so for Cryo characters, this is a bit of a no-brainer. One of Cryo's biggest strengths is its ability to react with Hydro and freeze enemies, except bosses, rendering them unable to move or receive knockback, keeping your character safe from damage and the enemies grouped up. On top of that, the 4-piece Blizzard Sprayer set drastically increases crit rate against frozen enemies, allowing for less crit rate investment and more crit damage investment for your Cryo damage dealers, making Cryo one of the strongest damage dealing elements in the entire game. I'm sure you're familiar with the sight of our top tier cryo damage dealers like Ayaka and Ganyu shredding entire abyss chambers in a matter of seconds. This just goes to show how strong cryo is, but in the end, it still relies on the freeze reaction. Bennett is a pyro character, and anything that you'd normally do with him in a standard team rotation will end up applying pyro, so even though our cryo characters still scale off attack, Bennett's pyro application will end up disrupting the freeze reaction. This isn't a problem though. In a standard freeze team, you normally have your main cryo DPS, a cryo support, a hydro applicator, and an animo support, leaving no room to slot in Bennett anyways, and with at least one or two of these supports being damage buffers, they more than make up for missing out on Bennett's buff. There's not much to say about these other elements, and physical, as they don't have many damage dealers, but there's nothing really special about these characters in terms of stat scaling, just the usual attack. 
so running Bennett is a pretty decent option, but similarly, he's not really a must-have for these teams, as they have other comps that generally just have better synergy than just stuffing in an attack buffer. Like Xiao, for example. Yes, Bennett provides some nice healing for Xiao and the attack buff is decent, but it's awkward to use them together because of how much Xiao tends to move around, or especially with lighter enemies, be forced to move around, because he tends to knock them away, resulting in him moving out of the buff circle. Besides, with Farazan being a dedicated animal buffer, she can easily take Bennett's place to buff Xiao, and she comes with some crowd control too, so that's extra points. The only real exception here is Eula. She's a hyper carry who scales off attack, making Bennett's buff pretty useful, but it's still pretty awkward to use them together as you need to be quick. Eula's burst doesn't snapshot, so you need Bennett's buff to last until the end of her combo, leading up to the big boom. And Eula needs to stay inside of Bennett's circle too when that happens, so you need to avoid moving around too much. But considering that Eula is a melee character and most enemies and bosses nowadays tend to move around a lot, yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. Also, don't quote me on this, but there's some speculation that Mika is gonna be a physical support, so he might be able to take Bennett's place as a buffer for Eula. Of course, I saved the best for last. I do have quite a bit to say about Pyro. This is Bennett's own element after all, so he has some pretty significant interactions with it. As mentioned before, slotting in Bennett with your Pyro damage dealer gives your team Pyro resonance, giving 25% bonus attack to all party members. And by looking at our current Pyro character roster, except for Hu Tao, all of our Pyro damage dealers scale off attack, making Bennett extremely useful to them. On top of the massive attack buff that he provides through his burst, his skill also generates Pyro particles, making him an excellent battery for your Pyro characters, especially the energy hungry ones like... Ugh, Shen Ling. And of course, how can we talk about Bennett without talking about his 6th constellation? C6 Bennett used to be really controversial, but it's less so nowadays because of the things that have changed. If you've noticed, the type of teams that Bennett really fits into nowadays are mostly pyro-focused teams, like Yoimiya teams, d teams, and national teams. I mean, even my girl Yoimiya doesn't really need Bennett these days because he has competition with Yunjin. In the non-pyro-focused teams that you use Bennett in, the on-field character would usually have an infusion that can't be overwritten, like Raiden Shogun in a hyper-carry Raiden comp, or if you choose to use them, characters like Child, Ayato, and Xiao. Also, Reverse Melt Ganyu is a thing. Essentially, in Pyro teams, C6 Bennett offers a small boost in damage, and in other teams, the C6 has little to no effect at all. So if someone tells you, Don't activate C6 on your Bennett or your account will be ruined! Just tell them, Sure old timer, let's get you to bed. It's safe to say for the current and future characters in team comps, Bennett will remain mostly a pyro support, and it'll be the only element that ever really needs Bennett. It's not just the characters though. The attack stats drop in importance is also shown in some weapons, especially the best in slot weapons of some of our newer 5 star characters. Some very notable examples are the latest 5 star weapons we've got, being a thousand floating dreams, key of Kachni suit, I probably butchered that, Staff of the Scarlet Sands and Hunter's Path, along with some older weapons like Redhorn Stone Thresher and Aqua Simulacra. The characters that these weapons are designed for don't value having high attack, and that's why I was able to clear Abyss with a level 1 weapon on Sino. You should totally check out that video by the way. It's also why these weapons have a pretty low base attack of just 542, allowing for a very high substat that can massively increase damage. Even the Primordial Jade Cutter, an old weapon with the same base attack, still works really well on attack scaling damage dealers because of its high crit rate. But nowadays, it's even better because the low base attack isn't even a downside for some characters like Aggravate the Ching. It's the only correct way to play her, by the way, don't at me. And the HP bonus is great for characters like Ayato, though yes, you still want attack on him, but the extra HP is nice, and Nilu too if you have her on a Hydro crit build. Bennett doesn't really see as much play these days as he used to, and honestly, I think it's a good thing. Back in the old days, he was always so overused, and every team wanted him, making it difficult to make two teams in the Spiral Abyss especially for people who don't have access to many characters. Even though he fell in usage, he's not necessarily bad now. He's still a very strong support, it's just that his buff is not as universal as it used to be, because we now have new options and more variety in team comps who don't need Bennett's specific type of buff. Basically, we have a lot of, well, as my friend Rocky likes to call them, different Bennies suited for different types of teams. We have Cryo Benny, Geo Benny, Electro Benny, Animo Benny, Normal Attack Benny, and potentially physical Benny. And of course we have the original Pyro Benny. See, Bennett was so broken back then that Hoyovers literally had to change the fundamental system of where damage comes from just to indirectly nerf him. Yeah, he was powerful enough to change the fucking game. At least nowadays we don't need to force him into every single team just to make it stronger. It's actually kind of funny that Kaching, one of the first characters in the game, 
used to need Bennett on her team just to barely function, but nowadays, her best team doesn't even want him, and we can very easily just slot him into the other Abyss team that might need him. I mean, personally, I don't even use Bennett in Abyss at all these days. In the end, the meta is constantly changing. We don't know what will happen, and even though Bennett will likely see less and less use, he'll still have a place in Pyro teams, unless they release a character who does exactly what he does but better. What about you? Do you use Bennett in your teams? Do you have a C6 activated? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this video helps you, and if you enjoyed it, consider giving it a like and subscribe to my channel. I like to upload informative content like this from time to time, and stream highlights from my Twitch channel, which you should totally follow by the way. It's totally fun here, I promise. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.